Hi guys, my name is Rebecca and welcome to my YouTube channel, Rebecca's Wild Side. Today I have a new podcast episode for you and I'm going to be talking about what I have knit over the past couple of weeks and what I'm working on. If you're new here, welcome. This is my safe space to share all my knitting and crafty projects with you. The first thing I want to talk about is what I am wearing and it is also my first finished object. If you are a long-term viewer, you will know all about this project. This is my Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knits. I refer to this as my red cardigan because it's the only red cardigan I have. Hopefully at this angle you can see it really clearly. It is super cropped. And yeah, it's got the double knitted button band. Hopefully you got a really clear view of it there. It's quite, I always find it quite hard to show finished objects when you're wearing them. So I'll take this off so that you can get another look as well. Now that I've got this properly washed and blocked, I've got a correct gauge swatch for it. So my final gauge for this piece was 20 stitches in length, <laughs> 20 stitches by 29 rows for 10 centimeters. I found this really interesting because my cardigan ended up really quite oversized. Um, I knit the smallest size and I think the pattern is supposed to be really oversized anyway and a lot of petite knits older patterns are very oversized before she started releasing an extra extra small and our, mine should be even smaller than um, her sizing because my gauge was slightly off, but it's still got plenty of room in it. So that's something I think to take into consideration if you're thinking about knitting this cardigan. It is going to be very large. And if you do have the ability to go down a size, if you wanted a less oversized cardigan, then that's another option that I think you could get away with. I knit it on 4.5 millimeter needles and it is knit in Drops Lima color red. I can't remember the exact number, but I really love this yarn. I've used it for a lot of my projects. And I've had a couple of requests asking about the pilling um, of this yarn. I haven't noticed that much, but I'm not somebody who, and I, I don't know whether this makes a huge difference, but I'm not somebody who moves around a lot. Like I do, but when I'm moving around a lot, I tend to get hot, so I'm not wearing knitwear. I take it off. Um, so it's not like rubbing against things, but I notice, I haven't noticed a lot of pulling with this. The only thing I do notice is because of the alpaca content, there are these like white hairs. These Some of these are red, obviously, but there are white ones in there as well. So they kind of, I wish I could show you clearly. Maybe you can see. I don't know if you can see there, but it is like almost got some like straw fibers in it. <laughs> the final thing I did was I sewed on some buttons. So I found these at a local antiques fair and they are, I don't know what they are, because they're really cool. They've got like a metallic stone vibe. They kind of look like stone or shell. But yes, that is my red champagne cardigan. The construction of this cardigan is a really basic raglan cardigan. It is knit flat, which was a bit of a challenge for me because I tend to get a little bit over the fact when I have to purl <laughs> every other row. I'm really proud I finished it and I this wasn't an enjoyable process for me. I, I do like to think that I'm a process knitter and I enjoy the process of knitting, 
but this one I really struggled to get through. It took me a long time. And I don't think that was just a motivation thing. I think genuinely it was a long knit for me, which is interesting because I did crop it and I didn't do long sleeves. But once I washed and blocked it, I was so pleasantly surprised. I started to feel better when I was doing the double knitted button band because it gave it a really beautiful finished look and it started to get a bit more shape, which was really exciting. And then after the wash and block, it just came together and to me it looked something that could have been store-bought and that was the vibe I was going for. So I was very happy with it. I don't find this fibre itchy. I think if you're very, very sensitive, alpaca full stop will itch you, but I, I wouldn't say I'm sensitive, but I do get, I don't enjoy the feeling of a really rustic yarn and I can wear this quite easily, so. I did an Italian bind off. I did a one by one rib for the cuffs and an Italian bind off. And the same for a really little short bit of ribbing on the bottom. Looking back, I think that if I was to knit another cardigan, I would definitely knit something held with mohair. I think that a cardigan, because it is a layering piece, it can afford to be a lot fluffier and warmer because you can wear it open and yeah, I think if I knit another cardigan anytime soon, it will be fluffy. One thing I've noticed, and I don't know whether it's the yarn or in general, because I've heard a lot of people talk about it recently, is although I knit the sleeves to length, I then blocked them and they came out quite long, but after wearing it and having it truly, truly dry, they really have shrunk back up. They do sit just maybe half an inch too short. Although slightly tedious, the pattern was really, really simple to follow. And this was my first cardigan and I would recommend this if you are looking for a straightforward raglan cardigan to do. I used a uh, handmade by Florence's double knit tutorial instead of the tutorial linked in Petite Knits Pattern. Uh, that is because I had seen this tutorial on YouTube before and really enjoyed the way that Florence explained it. And I did exactly the same for mine. And then for the buttonholes, I just followed the instructions in Petite Knits Pattern. I didn't watch a video for them. I am considering that if I ever want to knit this pattern again, I might consider knitting the same size using a four millimeter needle and a DK weight yarn. Uh, Drops Lima, I consider a slightly heavier DK weight yarn. So I think using something that's a really standard DK weight with a four millimeter needle will give the same um, design, but just a slightly more fitted shape. So that is something I would consider trying in the future. But that is it for my champagne cardigan. I'm really proud of myself and very happy that I pushed through to the end because there were quite a few points in this process where I just wanted to frog the whole thing. For my next projects, I said I don't want to knit another cardigan anytime soon. The only thing I am really keen to knit this spring and summer is a wrap. I won't go into too much detail because I'll talk about it when I get started on it, but I am looking at the, I think it's called the Summer Wrap by Knitting for Olive. Um, and it's really beautiful and I kind of have the right yarn anyway to just get started on that. So that's what I'm gonna try as my next cardigan. I have one more finished object for you this podcast. This is a new cast on something that you haven't seen before. I actually cast this on straight after the previous 
podcast episode and that is because I thought that I was about to go somewhere with a warmer climate which I didn't end up doing in the end and I really wanted a knitted tea, something to just refresh my palette. I'd just, or I was doing the finishing steps to this and it was just dragging a bit. So yeah, I cast on something completely different and it is a Tolster tea by the Crea Bayer, Rebecca Clow. Um, I'll take it off the hanger. I've been keeping it on the hanger because I'll get to why I've been keeping this on a hanger. Um, it is, the Tolster tea is a really straightforward, a really straightforward t-shirt pattern and it's super customizable. You are really encouraged to kind of let your inspiration lead the way with this pattern because it is just a really simple raglan t-shirt pattern and I knit mine in drops cotton merino because I wanted something with cotton in it and this is the colour raspberry sorbet and it's a new drops colour for this yarn and if you look closely You can see it's got, um, one of the plies is a pale pink and one of the plies is a hot pink, raspberry pink. So you get this really cool mild effect. I have owned this yarn before and I used it right at the beginning of my knitting journey, but this is the first time I've um, finished a garment in it. And I'm gonna address that first, because I am not a huge fan of this yarn, I have decided. Uh, it's a DK weight yarn and I knit it on four millimeter needles. And because of the cotton, you get this really beautiful drape. And because it is, a, is on a four millimeter needle, but it's kind of sheer and not in the way I care for it to be sheer. I don't know how to, I really want to explain this properly. First you can see, although it has been washed and blocked, you get some really obvious creasing in the bottom. And the yarn wasn't, uniform the stitches didn't come out particularly uniform and then the biggest issue i had with this yarn which was really frustrating was i'm gonna find you an example so when weaving i use the invisible weaving technique where you follow the stitch pattern almost like duplicate stitching when changing yarn and it's just really obvious um, and the stitches are really pulling in places. My dog also caught this project, so I had to cut the yarn and retie it in a certain place and that caused some issues. But in general, I just found this yarn really tricky to work with and I get some stitches which are much bigger than others and therefore it looks like it's got holes in it. But it's a really quick project to knit up Let's talk about the pattern. The pattern is amazing. Everybody raves about it and for good reason. Although it is a very simple raglan t-shirt, it's written really well. And I think the sizing's very good. Crea Bayer does, is a true to size designer, which I really like because for a t-shirt, I didn't want something too baggy. Although this is boxy, this actually was a really nice shape before I blocked it, but I knew I had to block it because I wasn't in, I just didn't like the stitches. And also as a t-shirt, it's gonna get washed. It's gonna get blocked at point again in the future. So why not do it now? 
but it really opened up the sleeves, which was nice. And the modification that I made was I did these little pearl bumps. Nothing special. I did a one by one ribbed neck. I just, I didn't even do, I didn't do a German twisted cast on. I just did a standard cast on and I did the same casting off. I didn't do an Italian bind off or anything special. I kept the ribbing really short because it's a t-shirt and I just wanted a clean finish. Uh, I think you could have done I-cord finishings, which could have been really cool. You can do a folded finish, which could be really cool. I might do that in the future. Again, I knit the smallest size and I used exactly four balls of the cotton merino from Drops. So this was a really good piece to kind of just use up that yarn. I don't know what I would knit this in next time. Even here, like you can see, that's not me, that's a manufactured knot, as in that was already in the skein and it's just poked through. But as like a really, not a scrappy t-shirt because it wasn't made from scraps, but it's a t-shirt I'm gonna throw on when there's warmer weather and something that I think is really fun. Just the bright color with a pair of blue jeans. Yeah, really, really quick little knit. I knit this in, I knit the bod, uh, I knit the, I knit most of the body and the sleeves in two days and then I spent like four days knitting two rows at a time to finish the body. Um, so you could definitely knit this in a couple of days if you, if you committed to it. I'll definitely be making a lot more of those this summer. I'm going to try a few different yarn combinations. I might try 100% cotton. But I don't know if that will exaggerate my issues with this one further. But it's very soft because it's cotton and merino. There is no itch to this. So this is 100% soft next to skin. And I rolled it up because it's going to have creases anyway. I'm going to move on to my first whip. And I've spoken about this a fair bit um, here. But... I have nothing bad to say about this, this piece, this process, this pattern. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. So I don't mind that it's taking a little while. I think it's taking a little while because of the stitch. So this is my Braemar sweater by Coco Amore Knitwear. It is a really cool dropped shoulder, oversized, v-necked, all over textured sweater with some colour work at the bottom. So you do add in a second colour pretty soon. Um, I saw this pattern, it was really cool. And yeah, where do I start? I will start with my yarn combination. So for this main color, I am using the Knitting for Olive Merino and Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. These are both the colors Dusty Dove Blue. I'm just holding one strand of each and I'm knitting it on a four millimeter needle. This stitch pattern will grow so although it looks pretty. I have never knit a really successful drop shoulder pattern. So I don't know how much this is, how much this is supposed to drop, but I know it will grow because I did a gauge swatch because you learn those things when you do them correctly. But since you last saw it, I finished the front panels. I joined in the round and I added the v-neck that it's a double folded one by one rib v-neck 
I, excuse my non-weaved in ends. Something that is really interesting is my V. Now, it looks great. Um, I love how it looks, so I don't care. But I don't think it's supposed to look like that. I hope it's really clear. Right? It's supposed to look more like that. So all I will say is it hasn't got a singular chain going down the middle. It's got the two, the two slip stitches. I don't know. I don't know. I, I followed I thought I followed the instructions for the v-neck completely correctly. It worked. It doesn't look exactly like that, but the other but the uh, the decreases do. So maybe I was supposed to knit through the back loop or something. If you have any idea what I'm talking about and you've already worked it out, please let me know um, what I did differently. But. So I think I actually prefer this. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it vibes with the texture more having like a crisp, like crisp, like twisted. Oh, maybe I twisted them. I don't know. No. Anyway, not a big deal. Uh, that was totally unintentional and I don't know how to do it the other way, so. I am knitting the smallest size and it's supposed to be really oversized anyway so it'll be interesting to see when i finish the whole thing how much it grows i might be playing yarn chicken with this piece so i have just finished a ball of merino for the body and i think it's almost time to bring in my contrast color so i might just do that anyway and I'm gonna start on the sleeves first, I'm gonna do the sleeves next, and yeah, just keep going with it. As I mentioned, the stitch pattern's really interesting, so it is taking a little bit of time. It's not hard to do, um, because some, I mentioned it recently to someone, and they said it sounds like it's kind of like a brioche stitch, and it's not, because it's not, but that did make me think, oh, because it's almost like a half stitch, because it's got slip stitches in it. Is that why it's growing slower? So that's a bit of a feeling that I'm getting for it. The one thing I will mention is, I knit the smallest size to pattern for the front yokes and the back yokes. So I had the correct number of stitches And when I picked up for the v-neck collar, I there was no way I was going to be able to get the number of stitches that it recommended. So I just did my best, but I think I've got 20 less stitches in the v-neck. And I do wonder if that's because my row gauge is off, which could be a thing. That could be, could be exactly what it is. Um, but... I know it's not blocked and I know this is going to grow and this might not as much but I think it's fine like even if it stretches because it's one by one rib it's got loads of stretch in it I'm not worried I also think yeah I just I just don't know where I would have got those extra stitches from I was you know you're supposed to pick up four out of every five in the v-neck I was not finding five stitches it just wasn't happening so I just picked up every stitch and hopefully that'll be fine and I won't have to redo it. For my contrast colour I did order some yarn because I had a paler colour. I had a pale blue to do as the contrast but I wasn't feeling it so I, went, I got a really beautiful dark navy which is not in my bag. Well good thing I've got some here. Here's one I made earlier. This is the contrast colour I plan on using. It is whale blue and dusty whale blue. And it's this beautiful dark dusty navy. 
and that's in exactly the same yarn combination, the Knitting for Olive Merino and the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. I'm really enjoying working with this yarn. I tried it in a stockinette once upon a time and really struggled with the yarn texture that I was getting. I didn't enjoy it. I feel like I'd have to go down a needle size, but on the four millimeter needles with a really squishy pattern and stitch definition with a really squishy stitch, <laughs> pattern, stitch, type, um, it's coming across beautifully and I'm really enjoying my, really enjoying working with it. I'm finding that the yarn is lasting for ages. I think I'm only two balls in, I might be three balls in. I think I might be three balls in because I used frog yarn to start this, but just really excited to keep working on it. Do I think it will be done by the next podcast episode? I hope so. Um, it just depends how much time I decide to give to my other projects. The next whip I have is my Sonia sweater. This is a petite knit pattern. Definitely one of her older ones, I think. Now, I've shown this again quite a lot recently and I decided to go with quite an interesting yarn combination so I'm holding three strands of drops flora which I guess equals out to a worsted weight yarn and I've shown you the neckline so you've I did that in the last podcast and I just did a one by one rib with an Italian bind off just singular, not folded. I was feeling a certain way about all the stockinette knitting I was doing. I was just getting really, really bored and I didn't want to knit stockinette anymore. So I have been doing a massive like stash busting thing where I've just been trying to use up yarns in my stash because I've got new yarns coming in and I'm trying to get rid of like non-sweater quantities and all of this stuff. So leftover from my Stephen West Knits MCAL, I had three balls of Flora as well, but in like these blue colors. Can't remember what they're called. I will name them on the screen. And I just decided that I was going to do some colour work uh, on the bottom of this sweater. It's because it's the same yarn combination, it's really easy. I also just went on Pinterest and typed in like colour work charts. And this four stitch repeated colour work came up and it looked really cool. So I just decided to work on that and I'm really glad I did that because it made the knit a lot more interesting. Uh, because this is so large, I wanted this to be bigger. This was originally supposed to be for my partner, but I wasn't sure it was gonna fit him, although blocked because it is such a tight stitch, it could grow massively. We'll have to see. Yeah, it needs to be long enough. This is not gonna be cropped. So this is just a slow burn project, which is gonna take its time. And yeah, I will list all of the yarns that I'm using. So it's three different colored drops flora, or it's six different colored drops flora. So three different colors for the main color, and then three different colors held together for the contrast color. And yeah, I haven't done any sleeves yet. I think this with this one, I'm going to knit the whole body. The Sonia sweater is a really straightforward drop down, drop shoulder. I always want to say drop down. It's because I'm thinking of drop down menus. It's a really simple drop shoulder pattern, full stockinette. And yeah, I think it's quite a good one to have. It's got loads of positive ease. And 
I think again, it's really customizable, a bit like the Tolster tee. You can add things to it. You can add any color work, I guess, from the yoke down. You can marl it. I guess I'm doing both. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity to play around with the pattern. I am really tempted to do a mid project block with this piece because I'm convinced it's going to grow a lot with the three strands of drops of flora on four millimeter needles. It's got this beautiful tight texture, but I think it will really relax with a blocking and open up. So I've never done a mid project block before, so I'm a little bit scared to do that. I might just steam it um, with an iron and see what happens. I think it's just going to be a very, as I mentioned, slow burn project. I work on it a bit. I would like to get it moving and off the needles because, again, it's been on the needles since... Um, before Christmas but so have a lot of these projects and it's just everything's I'm just enjoying the process a little bit more and everything at the moment but I do feel like I don't have too much new stuff to show you because these jumpers they are all jumpers are just taking up a lot of my time I've also found that I've been scrolling through Instagram a lot recently and where I used to see a lot of projects that I was like, oh, I have to knit that. Because I'm pushing myself with new techniques and I want to do more complicated things, I'm not just seeing as many things as I want to do. Like another stockinette jumper in a colour that I already have is just not not calling to me at the moment. There's going to be a lot of stockinette summer knits and camisoles and things like that that I'm just going to finish these projects and then start thinking about those because that will bring me to the new season. So as I mentioned, I'm trying to work my way through my stash. I've got a lot of new yarn for new projects recently that I haven't even touched because I just want to clear my needles and I want to get rid of some of the yarn in my stash that's just not, not dedicated to something. So I had quite a few balls of Drops Air in the colour 3, which is pearl. It's this really light grey. So a few nights ago, I just cast on a really simple raglan. Um, I actually did this myself, just like fudged the stitch counts. And I'm holding Drops Air double and I'm knitting it on eight millimeter needles. They're huge. But I have found, I thought because I'd be knitting them on eight millimeter, eight millimeter needles, it would be really quick and easy. I'm actually, I know I mentioned this with my Truman turtleneck that I've showed you before. I always think it's gonna be fast, but I actually find the larger needles quite tricky to work with. My other problem with this project is, it's really simple, it's just a really quick cast on, standard cast on one by one rib neck. Pretty much, I'm showing you the same thing in so many different yarns today. <laughs> but the reason I wanted to work this up is, this yarn is like a cloud. If you have not worked with Drops Air, it's kind of fiddly to work with because it's thick and thin because it's a blown yarn. A few people I've seen have held it double and therefore it has a bit more structure and that's what I've done here. And this is the softest jumper that I will have. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool because the color is a mixed colorway, holding it double as well evens it out a bit. 
the yarn content is 65% alpaca, 28% polyamide and 7% wool. The only thing is I might have made a little boo-boo with this project. So as it was a stash busting project, I had five balls of 50 grams in this yarn and I'm holding it double and I really don't think I have enough yarn to make anything wearable. Um, I have decided I'm going to knit up the sleeves and then see what happens, see how much yarn I have to get out of the body. It might be like super cropped with long sleeves and big and fluffy. I'm not sure. I'm hoping I can do something with it. I really don't want to have to order more of this yarn but it is really often on sale so if I have to order any yarn for anything else in the future I might just add some more of it. I'm hoping because it's held double I might get away with a slightly different dye lot but I guess we will have to see. Again this is something that I'm going to use up all the yarn on it and then put it away. If I don't finish it I'm going to put it away until I end up needing to get a new yarn order instead of just ordering yarn for this because it's just not a priority. This is, as I mentioned, a scrap yarn project, even though it's not really made out of scraps. It's just a non-sweater quantity that I had that I wanted to get rid of. Moving on to my last whip. I've shown you before my pink fluffy mohair sock. This is just a vanilla sock with one strand of Filcolana Arweta and one strand of Drops Kid Silk. It looks very funny off my foot. It has been, no it hasn't been blocked, but even with blocking I think it would still look funny. But it looks beautiful on my foot. It has a slip stitch heel. I think it's also a twisted slip stitch heel which is really cute. I'm knitting the second one. I cast on 60 stitches for this one and I actually during the gusset decreased down to I think 54 because it was just looking massive. It then knit on 2.25 millimeter needles and I've just started my second one so I had a bit of a break between them but I have everything I did written down in a project page and I just do for all my socks I do an Italian a German twisted cast on because I really like the look that it gives and it's super stretchy and yeah I'm just starting that so that's kind of my small stockinette project at the moment I'm really glad that I'm not stuck on sock island so I haven't got second sock syndrome so I really want to get those done. They are definitely warm fuzzy house socks. The colorways for these yarn is the Filcolana Arweta is color 226 and the Drops Kid Silk is color 17 Dark Rose. That is all my whips I've got at the moment. I'm trying to hold off casting on anything new. Um, but although it's been two weeks, I feel like I haven't got loads of knitting done. But I guess when you look at things separately, I have. I think in my head, a lot of these things I thought would be, I'd be working a lot faster on them or I'd be working through them a lot faster. For example, the Drops Air scrappy pullover. I thought because it was on such big needles, I'd fly through it, but because they're uncomfortable to knit with, I found I haven't. I'm going to move on to my acquisitions. I've only really got one uh, acquisition, but I've got, uh, yeah, let me just get into it. So I follow the Crea Bayer Rebecca Clow on Instagram and I saw she had a story come up the other day and she had ordered some wool from Novita. So I decided to Google Novita and 
it came up that they had yarn on sale uh, through one of the distributors. So I decided to order some to try it because I really want to try new yarn types. I mentioned in my goals for this year is, you know, I wanted to look at things other than drops, which I am doing. It doesn't look like it because a lot of my projects are like using up scraps or I'm working through older project plans rather than starting with my new stuff. But yeah, so the first wool type I got is the Natural Collection by Navita Wonder Wool. So these come in 100 gram balls and they are a double knit yarn, a DK weight yarn. I got this in three different colors. This is 100% wool and it's not particularly rustic. So it may be superwash. But the brand is a, a Finnish brand, I didn't realize. Um, uh, it's from Helsinki in Finland. So I got three balls in the color powder, which is color 609. I got three balls in the color wild mushroom, color 068. I got one ball of the color ballet, which is 663. My idea for these yarns um, although I've only got one of this colour, I really wanted to do something colour work. With these, I was looking at patterns from the Petite Knitter. She had a book coming out with all sorts of new colour work patterns in it, so I'm considering maybe a pattern like that. Or, uh, Veronica, I wanna, I'm not gonna butcher her username. <laughs> Veronica, who is Kuto Vikika on Instagram and YouTube. Um, ages ago knit a sweater called the Stitches, Stitches, Stitches sweater and it's such a cool colour work sweater. There's only one photo of it on her Instagram. She did show it off in a vlog once but she never wrote up the pattern until now so the pattern's cur currently in testing. It's really cool so I hope that it a DK weight will work for it. If not I'm going to have to buy a load of new yarn for that because it, is, it will be something I'm making. And from the same company, Navita, I also got some soft merino four ply. So this is 100% merino wool. It's a fingering weight four ply yarn. So I got six balls of this color, which is Semolina Porridge 006. And I got five balls of this color, this beautiful green color, which is Cabbage White Butterfly 305. So I'm hoping I can get some sort of sweater quantity out of both of these colors separately, but also again, I think they'd be really beautiful for a color work project if I ever wanted to do one. That is everything knitting wise that I have for you today. I was going to touch on um, a little tiny bit of life news, but it's still to do with knitting. I have started attending a knit night in the city of Brighton, which is one of my nearest larger cities. And yeah, it's a really beautiful yarn shop there called Yarn and Needles, Yak, Y-A-K. Uh, they have a beautiful, beautiful collection of natural yarns and also a lot of vegan yarns. And yeah, I've been going to a knit night. I've been making lots of new friends. It's been, it's a whole different experience to talk about your passion with people in, per in person because I don't know any knitters um, at all <laughs> so I can't discuss knitting patterns, yarn brands, yarn types, uh, techniques, suggestions and stuff with my current circle of friends 
but being able to discuss these wonderful things with other humans has been amazing. So that's something I really look forward to continuing in the future. I am still on the fence, but I might be going to Unravel Yarn Festival, which is a small yarn festival. I don't know how small it is actually, but it's a yarn festival in Farnham. That's something I'm thinking about going to, so that would be before the next podcast episode. I am keep asking myself, do I need any more hand dyed yarn? Is that a f question anybody should have to answer? But I've got plenty that I've got so many plans for which just aren't getting used up. But it also might be a really nice experience to go with these new people that I've met. And yeah, just experience a yarn festival. My Copenhagen trip is getting nearer and nearer. I will definitely have a podcast episode before I go, but I'm really looking forward to filming that this time because I didn't do it last time. I wasn't vlogging or I wasn't doing YouTube when I last went to Copenhagen. And I'm so excited. I'm trying not to buy yarn here because I have plans to buy plenty over there and I'm already picking out projects. Um, so I might even do a mini breakdown video of projects and yarn that I need to buy. But other than that, that was everything I hoped to talk about today. So if you enjoyed this video, I would really, really appreciate it if you could give it a like. If you want to join the conversation, comment below. Let me know what you're knitting at the moment. I pretty much reply to all, if not most, of my comments. Even if you just want to express what you've been doing or ask questions or anything, I think it's nice to have other people to talk to about knitting because not everybody necessarily has that in person. And if you want to see more videos like this and you want to be regularly updated on my podcasts, hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.